Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., all rights reserved. Tonight you're mine. Welcome back. 17 Till. I'm Jim Blassingabe. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. Broadcasting live from Louisville, Kentucky at the American Chamber of Commerce Executives Convention 2012. Next year it's going to be in Oklahoma City. And we have the president and the CEO of the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce with me right now. Roy Williams is here. Roy, thanks again for hanging out with us. And, uh, and, and, and you just got through inviting all of us to Oklahoma City. We appreciate that very much. I'm planning on, on being there and broadcasting live from there. Talk to us for a few minutes, Roy, about as, as, a, as, a, as a chamber executive, what do you see? Talk to us about, about the, the product, the, the ideal, the idea, the, the ideology, the, the benefit of chambers of commerce. Well, the chambers of commerce that are really relevant today uh, really sort of focus on two things. One is they, they, they focus on creating an environment where new jobs and investment uh, take place. To sort of do that, you have to not only sell your community and market your community, but you have to constantly think of your community as a product uh, that someone wants to buy. And, and so mm-hmm. that then describes what the role of the chamber is, and that's making that product competitive. So whether it has to do with the talent you have, education and workforce, whether it's advocacy on public policy, uh, whether it is public uh, infrastructure improvement, on and on and on. You have to continually be the, the advocacy group for making that product better, and then you've got to sell that product. So the, the mm-hmm. relevant chambers are really on top of that and are really doing that, and they're the ones where the leadership of the community convenes, both the public and private sector, and has that vision for the community and, and implements that vision and then sells that vision. So that's, that's the challenge in today's environment. Talk to us about what chambers are doing to align the workforce requirements and education in the community. That's a big well, one, isn't it? Well, education, workforce, whole talent is, is really front and center, I think, in almost every chamber today because people are concerned about education attainment, graduation rates, retainment uh, and attraction of talent to their community. Because if your employers can't get the best, then they can't compete. And if they can't compete, they're not going to stay in business. So, so, mm-hmm. so chambers are, are really trying to figure out where can they be most effective, you know, in in addressing those issues uh, in the local, regional, and state effort. So, you know, they're they're doing extensive programming in pre-K, K through 12, higher ed, community colleges, and looking at trying to get as quality an education in. In these student, in these people who tend to either go into the workforce directly or go on into higher education, and we've just got to continue to get those people prepared because a lot of them are not; they're falling through the cracks. Because that, whether not whether work. it's a small company like mine that w- that that can that could that could base their business anywhere, we, you know, that does a lot of online work and a lot of a lot of uh, telecommunications. Whether it's a small company like mine who's looking for qualified people, or a big factory who's looking for quality pe- qualified people, when they when they think about either staying in town or are moving to your city, that's one of the that's the first question they ask, isn't it? What are, tell us about your workforce? Yeah, and more and more now the 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 mantra is people want to decide first where they want to live and then they get a job as opposed to following the job. And so employers now are beginning to follow the talent instead of the talent relocating to the employer. That's a new paradigm. Right. And and communities really right. have to figure out how are they going to grow and retain that talent? It's kind of like entrepreneurism. I mean, you know, most of the businesses in your community started and grew there. That's what you got to do with your talent. Start it and grow it there as opposed to try to recruit it. Roy, I've, you, I've, you and I have each seen our we, – we've both seen our gray hair. I've got mine. You've got <laughs> yours. We've been, we've been around the block a couple of times. If you were, if you're talking to a brand-new chamber executive president, somebody, you know, still just a little bit wet behind the ears – what would you tell them about about forging their the future of their chamber for the, the rest of the 21st century? 
Well, the first thing I would say is make sure you get your community leadership in the room. Uh, you have to get the people around the table who can make things happen and who understand the picture. So if, if you're starting with a bunch of people who have ideas but don't have the ability to implement them and don't have the capacity to look at the long-term view of the community, you got the wrong people. So surround yourself, first of all, with great people. And then second, you know, don't abuse them. Understand they have limited resources, limited time. Leverage those as best you can. And, you know, and, and keep that, that culture in your community about thinking forward and about getting stuff done that's relevant to what needs to be done. Mm-hmm. And, and the, one of the key relationships, though, is you've got to have a good relationship with the political sector, don't you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, you, the public and private sector have to be joined at the hip. You know, one can't really be effective without the other. So you, you've got to forge a relationship of trust, respect, and a willingness to do things, which means compromise. Uh, right. So you can't run your program down someone else's throat. You have to figure out what's compatible, you know, with both. And, and so you have to be in lockstep, though, because the public sector provides many of the resources for the infrastructure, education, and stuff. But it's got to meet the needs of the private sector and the business community that actually pays the bill. So they've got right. to, they've got to work together. Absolutely. Well said. What's what's the uh, folks? By the way, it's acce.org. And you can go to the convention site there, the convention links on their website, and see more about about what's going on here. If you want to, if you want to see what's happening, one of these events. And please, if you are a member of a chamber and your chamber executives are not going to these conventions, please find a way to fund this trip. I promise you, your community will benefit from being here. Uh, Roy Williams is with us, folks. He's the, the president and CEO of the Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce. When we come back after these messages, I'm going to ask him to tell us about what's going on in his city, in his chamber, and what they're doing to stay relevant in the 21st century. It's Tintail. I'm Jim Blastingame. Stay with me. I promise. I'll be right back. Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., intended for the private use of our audience, except as otherwise provided by copyright law. All other copying, redistribution, or publication without prior written consent is prohibited. All rights reserved.